pep talk. All right. Before you take this final shot on the pep talk, mm -hmm. just remember that anything less than the best is a felony. Thanks, Rex and Effects. Oh, wait, no. It's vanilla ice. Oh, so close. All right, hold on. Felony. Oh. Hey guys, it's Wes. I'm down here in Palm Harbor, Florida, on a family vacation. That is my father in law's 1971 Cougar XR7. Now, this car's been sitting here for over 30 years. It was parked sometime in the mid 80s. Hasn't run since the mid 80s. He got it in here got it in the garage, start taking it apart, and then life happens, and then life keeps happening, and then that happens. Now it was half disassembled in the 80s, the 351 Cleveland in it was freshly rebuilt in the early 80s, it was dropped in and ran for maybe two or three times, they had problems getting it timed with the distributor. Um, we're going to put in an ATI distributor in it, throw a new carb on it, change the fluids, and see if we can get this bad boy started. Our first bit of business is going to be replacing the old points type distributor with a new HEI style system while making sure to note our firing order. Next we're getting rid of the old carburetor that's sure to be filled with 40 years worth of funk. Ordered it from Amazon when I got here off the plane after I figured out what I needed. This is a recreation of the Motocraft 2100. I don't know who makes it, but it costs $99. And we're gonna see if it works. I'm gonna go with this side. Next comes the new carburetor and air cleaner gasket. Since we've installed a new HEI distributor, we can remove all the unneeded components of the old ignition system, like this old coil. Next, we gotta get rid of these crusty old spark plug wires. taking off the valve covers to inspect the top end and lubricate it in order to prepare it for its first startup in nearly 40 years. Since they're already off, we're taking a moment to clean up the valve covers with a light degreaser. Before we can pre-lube the top end, we want to change the old oil. Unfortunately, there's years worth of dust bunnies and dead lizards under the cougar. It turns out that the car is too low to remove some of the debris from underneath of it, so we have to air up the rear tires. Now we can remove everything else from underneath the cougar. This oil has been in this car for nearly 40 years. It's absorbed moisture and won't provide adequate protection on startup. It's gotta go. All right, so we drained the oil, we got the valve covers off and cleaned up. Now, before we put the valve covers back on, we're actually going to put some oil down on the connecting rods here um, just to make sure there's oil on them before we try to fire it up.
installing our newly cleaned valve covers, being mindful of the correct pattern for tightening the bolts. And then we're going to put in some new oil. What are you doing now? Loosening the header to see if we can get the starter in with any better accuracy than we have in the past. We had to take the starter out because the old starter was borked, but we had to jack up the engine. Uh, had to release it from the motor mount jack upside the engine get the old one out and now the new one might even be a few millimeters bigger than the old starter so now we're trying to take the header loose see if we can make room for the starter seems like i'm punching something out of the way because it's oh oh got it so it is those lines I'm glad you're under there because I couldn't get under there yesterday. No, you probably couldn't fit under here. This is tight. I'm not claustrophobic, but when I get a little weird, I can't turn my head around. It's bugging me. Cougar phobic. Boop, boop. Uh, what? Nah, I love cougars. You getting all that camera? All right, I hate this car. Take me back. I don't trust it. Think you can wriggle your little monkey head under here and take a look? Oh, there's like a ton more room. Yeah, it's gonna go right in. All right. You can hold it into position. Yeah. Hang on, let's back it up. I gotta find the hole. <laughs> Do you mean to push this bottom away? Oh, here, so the hole's like up there. Okay. I don't really know what position is. Me neither. Because I can't see anything. You need to come further under here. Here, move that light out of the way, slide your head under here, and I'll hold this back. Oh, I can see it. I can see it in the camera. <laughs> Clever. If I do it like this. So it's right there. It's in that area. Thanks, viewers at home. <laughs> I feel like this is Blue's Clues for automotive. A clue! We've borrowed a battery from our truck to try and turn over the Cougar's engine. What you about to do? Gotta crank it. Touch the ground, right? Yeah. You gotta wrap it. should always be right. Yeah. And under no circumstances, you can battery Yeah. You know, why not? Let's see what happens. We're just trying to. Get the fuel filter or fuel pump going. You get get fuel up into the carburetor. Something seized. Have you tried turning the engine over? I'm done with the on. Okay. We can do a snap seized. Okay. We should be able to do a full rotation. We can do a full rotation just to double check. So it's actually trying. I mean, just spark it up. first. Ooh, we got lights. We got a parking light and fuel light. You want to just try tapping it? Nothing. How do you test a solenoid? Well, I mean, you apply power to one of these and it should close, but I didn't even hear it click. Ground to the battery ground. We use a multimeter to test the wiring. Is that the ground? Dude, that's positive. That's why I was getting negative 12. Okay, so. Wait a minute. What do we do, Brady? Well, after we figured out that the wiring to the starter relay was backwards, uh, we found that we can hit the key and get this car to turn over. So now we're going to try and crank it a little bit to fill the fuel, uh, fuel filter. We're going to put the top up. 
on so it doesn't arc. <laughs> Let's do that. I'll have a hand. I got my hand on the battery. We're gonna watch for gas. There's our gas. It's going through sketchy tube up into the fuel pump. Oh crap. Yeah, we should probably we need to tighten the fuel pump connection <laughs> first. It's probably 7 sixteenths. Uh, gotcha. Brady is ready. Safety first. To try to crank this to get fuel from our makeshift fuel tank up through the fuel pump to here so that we can prime our carburetor. So we tried uh, priming the fuel pump, this guy, and nothing happened. I'm, I think the diaphragm inside dried out from it sitting for the last 40 years. Brady's got a new one there, and we're going to install it and see if we can get some gas to it. things we did while we were waiting for our parts to be ready at the parts house was go ahead and put on the plug wires to the HEI distributor and while we were at the parts house we went ahead and grabbed a new a secondary fuel filter to go on the Motorcraft 2100 we go ahead and pull the old one off and put a new one on just for good measure. There's this fit. No, more giant. Giant -er. It's the most giantest. Is that the other one? Man, Look at this guy. What is it? You can see you right here. Yeah, it's, it's a good filter. It lets all the stuff go. Look. He's in the face. It's We're gonna hook up the battery. See if we get fuel. Oh, battery We got our new fuel filter on, new fuel pump on. Got this ghetto wiring to the distributor to give it 12 volts. Got our gas there, go into there, and we have our safety stuff over there. So I'm going to supply 12 volts to the distributor and see if Brady will crank it. Crank it. Mm. You want me to come over there and crank it? You may wait outside. I don't know why this makes me so nervous. Crank it. Look at there. That was loud. Not as loud as I expected, but it's in the room. Can't be that far off. It's taken nearly three days, but we've resurrected this engine from nearly 40 years of neglect and proved that this old XR7 may have some adventure ahead of her yet. Our time here in Palm Harbor is quickly coming to an end, so from here on out, it's a mad dash to get as much work done to the Cougar as possible. We promptly get to work in order to get this old cat sitting on her own suspension. So today we're putting new shocks on this in an attempt to get it to sit on its own suspension for the first time in 40 years. Um, I ordered some shocks last night for a 71 Cougar. Unfortunately, this is a 1970 Cougar, which means we had to take those back. We had them like overnighted from Tampa. They didn't work, so we went down the street, found these, and they were about half the cost. So we're gonna get these slapped in there, and then that slapped down there, and then this slapped back here. And, uh, here we go.
This power steering assistance cylinder has to be re-hung in order to install new tie rod ends. It's time to put the front wheels on and get this Cougar off those jack stands. After hours of reassembly, this Cougar is finally sitting on its own suspension. What are we doing, Brady? We're going to get some fenders out of the attic. Fenders in the attic. Fenders in the attic. That is not just a bad Tom Waits song. Not the, uh, uh, I think we need a flashlight. Hmm? It may be extremely difficult. Yeah. There's probably a light up there. I can't imagine somebody would have an attic without a floor. All right, I'm going to flip the camera around. It's hard to do it, but I did it. You can't do it. Oh, can you bring the uh, lamp up? There's our fenders. Removing these fenders from this hot Florida attic was not an easy task. They weigh about 50 pounds apiece. <sighs> That's how you get fenders out of an attic. We only have a few hours to get the fenders and hood situated before we have to start packing for our trip back to Kentucky. So it's all hands on deck to get as much done as possible. It may not seem like much, but I love what five solid days of wrenching did to this old cougar. For the first time in nearly 40 years, my father-in-law's dream of returning his car to the road seems possible. We may not have gotten it back on the road yet, but I got to spend five awesome days wrenching with my brother, father-in-law, and stepdad. And I'll call that a win any day of the week. Let's face it, old cars are cool, but what fun are they if you can't share the experience? That's what automotive hobbies are all about. I can't wait to come back to Palm Harbor to make more memories and finish that cougar up once and for all. And you'll be able to see it all on a future episode of Motogami. Thanks for watching. That's all you. My feeling down deep in my soul that I just can't do. Yes, I'm on my way. What is that? 2013? Mighty glad you came.